Hello and welcome back to the CES International News Stage here at CES 2015. I'm Will Findlater from Stuff and I'm joined by Melanie Chase, the Product and Marketing Manager from Fitbit. And, uh, and we're going to be discussing some, uh, some interesting new devices that have come out from Fitbit this week um, and, uh, and just how the show's gone in general. So how's, how's CES 2015 been for you? It's been an incredible year for us here um, at CES. And we were very excited to announce uh, the launch of our newest products, so Charge HR and Surge, um, on Tuesday. So these are really fantastic products for us. They expand our reach to people that are more interested in active exercise and performance training with some new features. So um, love to tell you a little yeah, bit yeah, about yeah. them. Yeah, yeah it would be great. So, uh, so uh, these devices were announced back in October. They're um, announced in October, right. Um, uh, but they're, uh, they're more advanced than previous Fitbits. You, this is the first time Fitbits branched out into heart rate tracking and, uh, and GPS, is that yeah. correct? That's correct. So um, we're very proud of our heart rate technology. We call it Pure Pulse Continuous Heart Rate. And that means that you can track your heart rate all day and during exercise right on your wrist with no uncomfortable chest strap. So this is the Charge HR. It tracks all of the things that you're used to seeing from Fitbit. So steps, distance, calories burned, floor climbed. But it also has the optical heart rate sensor right on the back of the device. And the really um, innovative thing about this heart rate sensor is that it works all the time. It works no matter what you're doing during the day. It works during your exercise. You can wear it when you're sleeping. And it has a five-day battery life. So it really is continuous and seamless in a way that's very new to the category. So how does it, um, how does it manage to, because lots of wearables struggle to you know, last that long. What's different about this technology that, sort of that allows, uh, allows the device to, to keep on going? Yeah, so we actually designed this technology in-house. Our research team has spent a couple years actually developing it. And it's designed to be low power. Um, so it means that instead of having um, a short battery life of a day or so, it works all the time. It's also very thin and very light, which means that you can actually put it in a smaller form factor than what you've seen on the market before. So it's been uh, some, some, of the, uh, some heart rate monitoring devices have been criticized for uh, their level of accuracy as just how um, uh, how good the data they collect actually is. Um, have you, what, what sort of tests have you done to sort of ensure that the data that you're collecting uh, with, a, with the Fitbit is, uh, you know, is, is actually going to be of, of, of great use to, uh, to, to people who are training with, with the device? Yeah, so we test our accuracy extensively across all of our products. Um, we've tested against chest straps uh, over the course of a number of different active exercises, and we see a very small percentage difference between um, what you see with a chest strap. The other thing that we really inform our consumers about is accuracy is actually largely influenced by how you wear it. So we tell our consumers if they're going to be doing active exercise, wear it a little bit higher up on your wrist. You have more blood flow higher up in the arm, and you don't get a lot of noise from the way that you move your wrists. And so you, as, an, as a user, can actually drive fantastic accuracy in how you use the product. That's interesting. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the, uh, the Charge HR. Yes. Um, the, uh, the, the, surge the Surge adds GPS to the mix as right. well, doesn't it? So this is our fitness super watch. And we like to say it has the best of built-in GPS, continuous heart rate, smartwatch notifications, and all-day activity in one device. It also has this great touch screen, so you can just easily um, scroll through your activity stats right on your wrist. Now, the great thing about the built-in GPS, it just means that you wear the watch, you head out on a run, you're going to be able to see your pace, your distance, your time, all right there on the device, along with your heart rate. And then when you sync to your phone, you get route maps and split times, all in your Fitbit app. So everything comes together in one place. We also just announced a partnership with Strava, which means if you're a Strava fan, you're someone who's a little bit more competitive, you can um, send your data over to Strava and compete on that um, app as well. Okay, uh, Strava's, Strava's fantastic app. So do you, do you expect uh, everyone who uses a, a, a Surge to, uh, to, to be constantly check, uh, checking their stats on their, on their uh, the connected device, on their smartphones, or or given that you've got the screen on there, you've yeah. got quite a lot of information, do you kind of, does it also operate as a standalone device? Then? So we've designed our products so that the features that you need in real time are always available to you. So 
those things that motivate you, right? You want to see your steps. You want to see how you're doing. You want to check in and see your heart rate. Um, when you're running, you want to be able to see your pace. Um, you can see your average pace or you can see your real-time pace. So you can really manage how you're training. The other thing you can see right on this device, as well as the Charge HR, is what heart rate zone you're in. So we have three heart rate zones. They're simplified for easy use. They're um, fat burn, cardio, and peak. And I love this for when I'm running because I know when I need to push myself a little bit harder or when I need to pull it back. Um, in terms of the things that you can see on um, the app, that's what we like to say as your detailed workout summaries. So besides running, this has exercise modes. You can program up to eight different workout types in on the device. And so whether you're lifting weights or you're hiking or whatever it is that you do, you can set that and you're going to see a workout summary tailored to that workout on your app. So how do, you, uh, how do you set that? Is that it's just built into the device, is it? Yeah, it's built into the device. So you can just click on the exercise um, tab and scroll through your pre-selected uh, exercises mm -hmm. and start a workout and go. And it's going to have your heart rate summary with a detailed calorie burn chart, how much time you spent in each heart rate zone, the duration of your workout. Um, and I, I love it because within my app, I see all of my workouts and I can compare what I'm doing for each one of them, how many calories I'm burning, how much uh, intensity I'm getting, what's my cardio um, sort of progress here. Um, it's, it's an incredibly uh, seamless way of tying all of that workout information together in one place. Right, okay. The other really amazing thing that this product does, it does do um, smart notifications. So you're gonna get a uh, caller ID right on your wrist, name of the person who's calling and a little vibration. You also get text messages. So you can read the full copy of your text messages right on your wrist. The other thing it does is music control. So you can play, skip, or pause songs right from the device if you have your playlist with you on your phone. So that, uh, that's taking, taking very much into smartwatch territory, you know, beyond just an activity tracker. It's, uh, um, and, and obviously, 2014 was a big year for smartwatches. Is that something that, is that a, a trend that, um, that, that Fitbit ex expects to sort of get ever more prevalent? So our trackers are all fitness focused first. Mm -hmm. They're designed to be motivating. Um, and fit seamlessly into your life. But we also want to give people those types of notifications that are most meaningful to them. Um, so we sh we've spent a lot of time talking to consumers about what they want to see on their wrist. And the phone calls and the text messages are really a convenient way of building those, product, uh, those elements in. But we also don't want to inundate people. This is a right. fitness band. People want to disconnect sometimes when they're doing fitness. So sure. you have to balance the level of um, information that you're giving in terms of smart notifications. So it's smart notifications and fitness. Are there any other, any other applications that you see? You know, there's a hall full of interesting yeah. wearables out there. Are there any other applications you see for wearable technology, um, potentially wrist warm or, or other that you think are particularly interesting um, and that, that Fitbit might be might consider branching out into? You know, we're always looking at new technologies and new sensors and different ways that people can use these products. I would say in general, though, the things that we're looking at are, are the types of sensors, the type of information that fits seamlessly into your everyday life. Right. So um, that's why our heart rate, for example, is continuous heart rate instead of momentary. That's why we have the stats on there that are most motivating for people real time. Yeah. Um, now, can I go back to talk, talk about Strava again? Yeah. Which is one of the one of the really interesting things about Strava, well, I guess it's the, the, the most exciting thing about it is the way it allows you to compare yourself to everyone, everyone else, else in the world, yeah. the segments, and you know, there's a real motivator there to, to get better. Um, uh, now, is community sort of a key aspect of, um, of, of, of what Fitbit's pursuing as well in the fitness space? Yeah, I think community is actually one of the most important elements of our brand and actually one of the most important things that's happening in the space. So right now, Fitbit has 70% share of the market. It means that we have the largest community of users of any wearable device. We also work on iPhone, Android, and Windows. So really, no matter what phone you have, no matter who you are, you know someone who has a Fitbit. And what that means is you can have a network of friends, of Fitbit friends, and you compete with them on a leaderboard. So you can see real time how everyone in your network is doing in terms of activity. 
We also just launched challenges. So that means you can check off um, whoever you want in your network and compete with them for a day or a weekend or a week. And you can cheer and taunt people and message them um, throughout the day. And we see tremendous motivation coming from that. We know that users that have one or more friends take 27% more steps. Um, and we also have known that um, for those who do challenges, who do our new Fitbit challenges, people walk an average of a mile more per challenge. So it's all about using community as a motivator. Um, fitness in general, the fitness journeys people are going on, they want their friends and family involved and they want it to be a community um, endeavor. So we, we plan to see a lot more growth and focus on community. We're launching new ways to la get Fitbit friends using Facebook and other tools. So um, it's a really important part of the platform. So uh, the, of the community that's, that Fitbit has built up to this point, uh, what what, um, what sort of level are most of the uh, the Fitbit users um, sort of uh, at in their sports? Is it is it typically is it typically quite casual, or do you get some really sort of hardcore fitness fanatics using Fit, Fitbit devices? So what's incredibly exciting about these new products that we've launched is that um, it really opens up our brand to people that are both interested in active fitness, so exercising, working out, just staying really fit and then people who are even further down that, that direction, people who are interested in performance, so people training for a marathon, like very avid runners. Um, and then of course we still have all of our great products, Zip, One, Flex, and also Charge, which launched in October, that help you just use everyday activities to find fitness. So um, really in this portfolio of products, you have something for every fitness level, um, and that's something, again, that really powers our community because everyone from your grandmother to your brother who's training for a marathon can all be in that same network together. So the way that these, these devices are pitched to a degree is, is, is in saying, right, we've got, we're furnishing you with these extra bits of data that allow you to, uh, to, to, to quantify your, your training that much more accurately. So really, it's, uh, you know, these are devices that, that you're hoping are, gonna, um, are going to appeal to a, a more hardcore fitness audience. Right. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, certain, certain elements here, although I will tell you, the surge right now um, is appealing to a wide array of people. Mm -hmm. um, we like to say that it's built for training and designed for all day. Uh, traditionally, right. sports watches have been something that you put on when you go for your run and then you take them right off because they're mm -hmm. big and they're bulky. Um, this product is really designed to be worn all day. Um, it has automatic sleep tracking, for example, um, so you can uh, just put it on, go to sleep, and it'll tell you how long and how well you slept. Um, so it really, I think, in this category, this is a big innovation to say your sports watch is now your all-day watch as well. Sure, right. Um, GPS, obviously, yeah, uh, GPS, heart rate, and accelerometers, those are, those are, those are what, uh, the sort of sensors that are built in at the moment. Right. Um, and we've seen some, some other quite interesting types of sensors, devices that claim to be able to, uh, whether true or not, that claim to be able to count, count calories as you consume them, those sorts of things. What, are, what, what sort of sensors do you expect to be, uh, to be built into future Fitbit devices? Well, I can't comment specifically on our future devices. I will tell you that we're always looking at the latest sensors and the newest technology. Um, for us, it's important to use, um, to work on technologies that we can really prove out and bring to the market in a meaningful, accurate way. And so that's always going to be our focus. Okay. Great. Well. I think that's a uh, that fascinating new product. Thank you yeah. very much, Thanks Melanie. Thanks so much. Um, that's us for now on the CES International News stage. We'll be back with more interviews later on today, so do stay tuned. Thanks again. Thanks.